today's session let us talk about the major topics functions limits continuity differentiability and differentiation so almost around 10 marks questions we are going to discuss in next three sessions we'll be talking about functions we'll be talking about limits continuity differentiability differentiation and of course we'll be talking about part of application of derivatives i hope dear students all of you have well prepared for your second PUC and your writing your JE and CET now that means to say you must be aware of basic formulae which are related to second PUC mathematics let us not waste time in listing out the list of formula which you are, which you are already familiar with this is a time where you are preparing for your CETs where you should learn shortcuts you should learn new concept you should learn new methods the method of elimination and method of easier analysis you have to learn in these sessions most of the problems what we are going to discuss will have a shortcut and I always say this dear students you should not spend more than 25 seconds to solve a problem of mathematics that means to say everything put together you should not spend more than 30 minutes for completing all 60 problems of mathematics this is where you will stand different from others and dear students if you ask your seniors they usually complain about one particular thing their complaint is very simple they'll say mathematics paper when i wrote was lengthy but actually usually mathematics papers will not be lengthy but if you're not using proper shortcuts if you're going for traditional methods definitely your paper looks lengthy so while I'm explaining a shortcut, learn properly, concentrate properly and make a note of it. Try to adopt same concept, shortcut and concept to the other problems which are given in the textbook. I hope dear students, you will follow the class and make the maximum use of this. f of x is equal to 2x square, find f of 3.8 minus f of 4 divided by 3.8 minus 4. Option A 1.56, option B 156. Option A 1.56, option B 156, option C 15.6 and option D is 0.156. Dear students, now let us not talk about the basic of differentiation and waste our time. Let us use a simple basic logic of functions and of course this problem can be solved even by just having some basic common sense also. Look at this, what is f of 3.8? f of 3.8 is given by, f of 3.8 is given by 2 into 3.8 whole square. Do you agree with me? What is f of 4? f of 4 is 2 into 4 square, as simple as that. And what is 3.8 minus 4? No need to explain you this, this is minus 0.2. This problem looks like complicated, but it is very, very simple. Therefore, f of 3.8 minus f of 4 divided by 3.8 minus 4 is equal to 2 into 3.8 whole square minus 2 into 4 whole square divided by, divided by, 3.8 minus 4 is minus 0.2. How simple it is, just see. Now we can take two common outside. Divided by minus 0.2 is there, don't change it, right as it is. 3.8 whole square minus 4 square. Right? You write it as 4 square minus 3.8 square. 4 square minus 3.8 whole square. Right? by just changing the sign therefore I am making this as positive remember. So now this is 4 minus 3.8 2 into 4 minus 3.8 into 4 plus 3.8 divided by divided by 0 0.2 0 0.2 cancels with 4 minus 3.8 4 minus 3.8 is 0.2 2 into 7.8 2 into 8 nearly 16 7.8 is 15.6. Therefore, option C is correct. 
It's a very simple problem, dear students. It's a direct substitution. Anybody can do this, as I told you before. This is taken from, once again, your Karnataka CET 2015. Now, let us go to the next problem. The next problem is, once again taken from your Karnataka CET 2015, the problem is like this. If f r to r is defined by f of x is equal to x by x squared plus 1, find f of f of 2. Four options are 1 by 29, 10 by 29, 29 by 10 and 29. Look at this dear students, f of x is x divided by x squared plus 1. A simple logic this is. What is f of 2? f of 2 is given by f of 2 is given by 2 divided by 2 divided by 2 square plus 1 2 square plus 1. What is 2 square plus 1? That is 4 plus 1 that is 5. 2 divided by 5. f of 2 is 2 by 5. Now, f of f of 2, f of f of 2 is f of 2 over 5. Is it correct? So now, what is f of 2 by 5? f of 2 by 5 is, f of 2 by 5 is, in place of x, just write 2 by 5, 2 over 5 divided by 2 by 5 whole square plus 1, that is 4 by 25 plus 1. Is that correct? Now, let us take LCM as 25. Numerator is 2 by 5. 4 plus 25, do you agree with me? That is 29 by 25. So, this 25 goes to numerator. 5, 5 is a 25. This 5 goes to numerator now. 5, 2 is a 10 over 29. 10 over 29, option B is correct. The next problem is the domain of the function f of x is equal to root cos x is option A 0 to pi by 2, option B 0 to pi by 2 union pi by 2 to 3 pi, option C 3 pi by 2 to 2 pi and option D is pi by 2 to 3 pi by 2 and all are in closed brackets. Dear students, it is a very simple problem. Anybody can solve this and of course, this is taken from your Karnataka CET paper. Look at this f of x is equal to root cos x. First, let me draw the graph of cos x. Do you agree with me? This is the graph of cos x. Right? And whereas, this is pi by 2 and this is minus pi by 2 and this is, this is 3 pi by 2 and this is 2 pi. And of course, I have taken this problem to introduce you about cos function. Cos of any odd multiple of pi by 2 will give you 0. This is 3 pi by 2, this is 5 pi by 2. 1 pi by 2, 3 pi by 2, 5 pi by 2, sorry, this is 2 pi. Anyway, so root of cos x is the question here. Root of cos x is defined only when cos x is non-negative. Cos x non-negative, what do you mean by that? Cos x must be greater than or equal to 0. Cos x is greater than or equal to 0 if the graph is like this. That is, particularly in this particular value, uh, for these values of x, cos x is positive. Here cos x is positive and here also cos x is positive. Positive in this sense, I am talking about non-negative also. If you observe carefully, from 0 to pi by 2, from 0 to pi by 2, including 0 and including pi by 2, cos x is positive. Therefore, root of cos x is defined. Do you agree with me? 
So, here function is definitely defined between 0 to pi by 2 and also you can say 3 pi by 2 to pi by 2 also in between 3 pi by 2 to pi by 2, 5 pi by 2 also the function is defined. That means to say it is defined between 3 pi by 2 to 2 pi also. That means to say option B is correct. It is a simple straightforward question. Anybody can answer if you know the graph of this. Suppose f of x is x plus 1 whole square for all x greater than or equal to minus 1. If g of x is a function whose graph is reflection of the graph of f of x on the line y is equal to x, then g of x is there are 4 options given. Let us not look into the options at this stage. Let us underline one particular thing. g of x is a function whose graph is reflection of the graph of f of x over the line y is equal to x. What do you mean by this? This is how we talk about inverse function. In simple terms, if you are finding out the reflection of the graph over y is equal to f of x, that means to say you are finding what? You are finding? finding inverse function, right? Sin x and sin inverse of x, y is equal to x axis is a line. Which is, which is acting as a mirror for this. y is equal to x is a line which acts as a mirror between y is equal to sin x and x is equal to sin y or for a sin inverse of x and of course, there are some restrictions that we can see later. But coming to this, the meaning of this is g of x is inverse of f of x. That means to say f inverse of x is equal to g of x. See, if f of x is this, then f inverse of x is y. Do you agree with me? But anyway, f of x, let us call it as y. Therefore, y is equal to x plus 1 whole square implies what? Implies what? Root y is equal to root y is equal to x plus 1. Correct? I will write it as root y minus 1 is x. Correct? But actually, what is x? x is f inverse of y, f inverse of y is equal to root y minus 1 because y is equal to f of x, f inverse of y is x, f inverse of y is root y minus 1. This implies what? This clearly implies f inverse of x is equal to root x minus 1. f inverse of x is root x minus 1, option B is correct. It is a straightforward question. And it is a simple question. Dear students, after discussing few problems from your previous CETs, you should have understood the level of questions that are going to be asked in CETs. Most of the CET questions you can solve in less than 30 seconds. I hope you have followed this. Let us discuss few more problems. Make a note of this. The domain of the function f of x is equal to 1 by root of mod x minus minus f of x is equal to 1 by root of mod x minus x is option A minus infinity plus infinity, option B 0 to infinity, option B my option B 0 to infinity, option C minus infinity to 0, option D is minus infinity to infinity minus r minus 0, option D is minus infinity to infinity minus 0. Look at this dear students. This is 1 by root of mod x minus x. Look at this, mod x minus x, this must be positive. Do you agree with me? Mod x minus x should not be 0 because if it is 0, f of x tends to infinity. Condition number 1, condition number 2 is mod x minus x must be positive because root of anything must be positive otherwise you will get an imaginary number. Therefore, mod x minus x must be positive that is the condition number 1. Mod x minus x is positive means mod x must be greater than x. So, this is the second condition. Now, the same condition is rewritten here. Mod x is greater than x. Now, let us analyze that dear students. 
Let us draw the graph of both mod x and x in analyze. So, the graph of mod x is clearly like this. Do you agree with me? Straight line. Mod x is x if x is positive, minus x if x is negative. This is y is equal to mod x. Do you agree with me? Now, and the second one is y is equal to x. You can see this green line. This is y is equal to x. Right? This is y is equal to x. y is equal to r, x or x is equal to y. So, if you observe carefully, for all the values of x greater than 0, mod x is same as x. This is y is equal to mod x and this is y is equal to x also. So, if x is same as mod x, then denominator becomes 0. Therefore, this is a ruled out condition. I repeat, if y is equal to x is equal to y is equal to mod x, that is possible only when x is positive. When x is positive, y is equal to x is same as y is equal to mod x. If y is equal to x is equal to y is equal to mod x, then denominator becomes 0. If denominator becomes 0, f of x becomes infinite. Do you agree with me? That means to say, 0 to infinity is a ruled out case. 0 to infinity is a ruled out case. Therefore, option A is ruled out and option B is also ruled out. And we have to talk about D. D is also ruled out because we have 0 to infinity included there. So, clearly option C is correct, but also let us talk about it. Here, if you observe carefully, this is y is equal to mod x, this is y is equal to x. y is equal to mod x is above y is equal to x. Therefore, mod x is greater than x if x is negative. x is negative means x belongs to minus infinity to plus 0. Therefore, option C is correct.